so Shaka after the legendary Zulo Warrior King. So he'll grow up to be a great leader for the herd. Despite his early despite his early trials. Just like Shaka. With his remark to our team. Shaka was one of several animals in the Shinchu Berry, which was a sort of hospital and holding area for new arrivals. Before they were relocated to the main game reserve at present, Tendai and Samson, a wizened white-haired man who looked at least 104 years old, were tending to a jackal that had been hit by a core and had a leg in a cast and an orphaned baby bush, bush baby. The bush baby was one of the sweetest creatures Martin had ever seen. With huge brown eyes and a tiny gray ab-like face, a, a long curling tail and paws like a koala made for climbing, one of Martin's chores was to make sure the sanctuary animals had water morning and evening and she'd also been allowed to feed Shaka three times. Once when she was giggling at his wobbly gait and pink mouth, gulping at his milk pail, she'd caught her grandmother watching her and in an energetic, almost pleased expression, watching her, express watching her with an Energetic, almost pleased expression. But even on the occasions when she seemed to be making an effort to be nice, Martine still couldn't shake the feeling that her grandmother didn't want to be there, didn't want her to be there. Much for her frustration, she hadn't yet been allowed into the game reserve herself. Martine consoled herself with the thought that at least she could help see the wildlife through the fence. She devoted all of her space, all of her spare time to read, reading up on the animals in the book she found in her room. She'd been fascinated by the facts she learned about giraffes. For instance, the spots on each giraffe are as unique as fingerprints. No two are alike. And although their necks are very long. They have the same number of vertebrae as other mammals. Set, as other mammals, seven. Nowhere did she find any mention of white giraffes. It was the animal of Sabuna that made Martine's life bearable. She never imagined she would live in a place with lions at the bottom of the garden at night when they were hunting she could hear their spine tingling war wars and just know it she was so close to them and unbelievable thrilling curiously creatures of all shapes and sizes seem in inaccessibly to know when when she needed a friend take her grandmother's cats warrior and shelby they show no interest in Martine at all, except when she was feeling miserable. And then she would, and then she could hardly move without rubbing them bes against her leg and clamoring to sleep on her bed. And no, on on two occasions the baboons had appeared in the garden when she'd had an awful day at school and performed so many. And she performed so many funny antics that she got a cramp from laughing. The second time it happened, Tendai came to the house on an errand while Martine was watching the den. He crept beside her and, and said, teasingly, So little one, this is what you get when you are supposed to be doing your homework. Martine was splutter, spluttering an excuse when he cut her off. With a chuckle, he told her that according to Zulu folk folklore, the baboons had been lazy, failed hands, 
Instead of removing weeds from the crops, they spent their days sitting on their hoes gossiping or sleeping in the sunshine. They sat there so long, for so long, that eventually their hoes became tails and the weeds attached to themselves to their body and became hair. You'd better watch out, Tendai said. If you sit there too long without doing your homework, you might grow a tail. And we will have to put you, and we will have to put you in the gamer zoo. He grinned over her shoulder. Isn't that right, Miss Thomas? Martine swung around, guil guilty to find her grandmother shaking with mirth, her blue eyes dancing. Tendai! When Thomas managed at, managed at last, you're pure gold. But none of this stopped. Martine from lying awake at the night, aching for her mom and dad. Or from wondering about the secrets of Sabuna. After nearly three weeks on the game reserve, she was convinced that Grace was right. There was a wall of silence at Sumbrana. Everything she asked about was met with the same blank response. A white giraffe, explained her grandmother. When Martine mentioned the tell Tendai had told her, as if a white giraffe could go missing at, at Sumbana. But Tendai said he saw some tracks. Martine, if there are if there was a giraffe in this game reserve, don't you think that Tendai who can track the path of a python across a bare rock would have found it by now. Martine had to admit that her grandmother had a point, but there were other secrets at Sambuna. For starters, there was a mystery of why her grandmother was on a mission to keep her out of the game reserve, and there was no question that 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 was what was going on. Sabuna was a private reserve owned by her grandmother, but one, but on week on weekdays it was upon to turns tourists and visitors who pre-booked appointments that were guided around the game warden, Alex Dupree's, and Gwen Thomas herself. That still left weekends. Yet there every Saturday her grandmother had thousands of excuses for not for not for not allowing Martine to go into the reserve. From a shortage of staff and the late deliver, delivery of fuel to Sambuna, you wouldn't want Tendai to run out of petrol when when we when a charging elephant was around, would you, Martine? She'd also overheard Gwen Thomas warning Tendai not to take Martine anywhere near Grace, to whom her grandmother began misphrasing as the crazy old magic woman. In quotes, I won't have it, she told him. I don't want to her filling Martine's head with silly ideas. Grace is out of bounds. As far as Martine is concerned, all of this added to an air of security that Martine could almost touch. She snooped about as much as she could and eavesdropped on more one or more two one one or two conversations. But she discovered nothing that could answer her biggest question. Why had Mom never told me about Subana? She'd found several books belonging to Veronica on her bookshelf, and now her now knew her mom had probably spent much of her life here. But there was nothing to explain why she never told Martine about it. Nor did Martine understand why her grandmother continued to maintain a story, silence on the subject. She found it odd that Gwen Thomas never once said a word about her own daughter. Even if she was still grieving, one would have 
have thought she might occasionally say something like, This was your mom's favorite meal. Your mom loved to play the piano. But no, there was nothing. There were plenty of photos of her grandfather, a silver-haired version of Harrison Ford, with her mom's sparkling green eyes. But none of her mom and dad, even though her grandmother had described them in her letter to social services as the finest people I have ever known, in quotes, and Tendai, who invendedly did know something about her mom, refused the point of blank to give her any information. Please, Miss Martin, he kept on saying, you must ask your grandmother, in quotes. One evening, when Gwen Thomas seemed to be in an unusual good mood, Martin plucked up the courage to do just that. A huge storm was raging outside, and they had just eaten dinner. Grandmother, Martin began, before Mr. Grice wrote to you, did you know about me? I did, Martine, said her grandmother. What kind of question is that? Then why didn't I know about you? That's your mother's business and none of yours. Her grandmother said, her voice rising, your mother made decisions in order to protect you. If you knew why she had done the things she did, you would be more grateful. How can I be, how can I be grateful when no one will tell me what's the truth? Martine burst out. Martine! thundered her grandmother. I won't tolerate this. You must go to bed at once. Martine jumped to her feet. Fine! I will go to bed. But when I am going to find out the truth about my mom and everything else that's going, going on around here, and nobody is going to stop me. Upstairs! Martine sat on her bed watching rain lash the window. It was pitch black outside. The tears ran down her face. She'd, oh, she'd lost count of the number of times she had cried since she'd moved to Africa. She wished she could be back in England with Rose or Mr. and Miss, Mrs. Morrison. But somehow she knew in her heart that she was ex exactly where she was meant to be in this wild, amazing place with its strange, hostile people. Everything her father had told her, quotes, happens for a reason, quotes. Martine couldn't for the life of her imagine, of her life, or her imagine, what that reason could possibly be, and right now she didn't care. She just knew that she needed a friend. Outside the wind slapped a bank around the house and the thunder cracked as if a thousand boulders were breaking across the heavens. Lightning split the sky. Martine gasped. A white giraffe was standing beside the water hole with it looking straight at her. For a split second, their eyes locked. The small sad girl and the slender young giraffe. And then the sky went dark. Martine pressed her face against the glass, desperate to see the white giraffe again, but it was impossible. There was no moon, and the rain was coming down in sheets. Martine felt so crushed, she could hardly breathe. It was like getting the best present you would dream of, a pony, say, and then having it snatched away again before you even had a minute to enjoy it. It was almost too much for her to bear. She tried to pull herself together. Had she seen the white giraffe, or had she? Could it have been a trick of the light? From this distance, there'd been something mostly ghostly about it. In the lightning's blue flicker, it was instant. It, it had a, a photosynthetic glow, but when she relieved the the instant of their eye had met, she was certain the white giraffe was out there. It had looked at her as though it was looking for her. Martine had a sudden urge to rush out into the game park and find it, find the shy creature. She knew there would be a terrible consequence. She had been forbidden from ever going into the game reserve by herself, and not even Tendai.
would risk going in on a foot after dark. Snakes, scorpions, lions, buffaloes, and even leopards were all on the prowl at night, and many of them would be out hunting. Martine were, was as well aware that if she disobeyed the order, she could be attacked or gored or worse. For a long time, she sat at the window trying to decide what to do. She couldn't stop thinking about the white giraffe. At last, she made up her mind. She took off the shorts she, chang she changed in and two after school and put on her jeans, boots, and navy blue school winter windbreaker. Behind the bookcase, she concealed the carved wooden box Mr. Morrison had given her. She removed, she removed the flashlight and knife and put them in her back pocket. At the door of her bedroom, she listened. The only sound that was, the only sound was the throwing rain muffled on the thickly thatched roof. As silently as she could, she tiptoed downstairs. The antenna boards were old. With every creak, Martine fully accepted to hear her grandmother's engaged shirk or feel her hand on her shoulder, but nothing stirred. When she reached the kitchen, she stood for several minutes, breathing deeply and taking comfort in the, wish, in the reassuring hum of the fridge. Then she unlocked the kitchen door. There was something very final about the click that made it swung shut behind her. She checked her watch. It was one minute past midnight.